I'm walking into Loch Etive again. Uh, plan is for an overnight camping session, bit of fishing, a nice steak to cook up on the fire. So, it's supposed to be clear and calm today and then getting a lot worse by tomorrow morning either rain or snow depends which forecast you want to believe well this is going to be interesting so the whole path here is just covered in mud and boulders um, I'm going to turn the camera around here and you can just see the wee bit I've just walked over uh, that's knee deep so it's going to be interesting to see how we get across the rest of it. Uh, must have been a pretty big drop of rain to get this. Straight off the mountain. What passes for soil in this area has just been stripped clean further up. So it's just bare rock where the stream bed used to be. Everything just washed down here. So I better figure out how to get across it. You wouldn't recognise them as new boots now. Let's hope there's not too many more like this on the way down. It's pretty exhausting stuff getting across that. This stuff's grown over the summer as well. Ploughing through brush here. So one of the things I need to be mindful of today is just that the days are so short it'll be dark you know getting off the back of four you're starting to run out of time by the time you actually get to where I'm going. Just another landslip here with the burns coming down full tilt. Just a wall of rocks pushed down here. Picked up some old tree trunks and stuff Taking them down with it. Uh, just going through the grass here. It's lost the orangey bronze colour. It's just turning into this sort of drab winter colour now. This is very tussocky stuff. A lot of boggy ground underneath it. I'm kind of hedging my bets today. Um, I've taken in a, a beach caster and also um, the same sort of bass rod I had last time out here. Uh, I'll just see how we get on with them. Um, different mark, slightly deeper water. Uh, but I think the bass rod will cope okay. This is my sort of typical mackerel bait I use up here. Just that or slightly smaller usually. So just put a bit of elastic on it. And then chuck it out. So this is the other reel I'm going to try today. Uh, it's just a pen spin fisher 4500. Uh, so I'll cope okay with any fish.
uh, fish number one. It's just a tiny spur dog. That's really what I was not wanting to get. Because uh, it probably means that the majority of them out there are this sort of size. Certainly I've had the baits robbed a couple of times already. Oh, this is a, an old fire pit, so you can reorganize it a wee bit, just so it sort of suits my needs a bit better tonight. I'm just going to cook my steak just on this bit of slate here. So I just need something small to let it cook over the embers, really. Uh, it's the sun starting to go down now. So just looking over to Ben Kruach in here. We're not very long before the sun goes all together and then we'll lose the light after that. So I'll need to get a move on and get the fire in the tent sorted out. It's going to get cold quite quickly. We'll just let this burn down a bit and we can use it to cook dinner later. Yeah, I'm not sure the camera's picking that up, but uh, there's ice starting to form in the, the wee pot here. Oh well, it's just going on the fire to get boiled up anyway. Well that one gave a good run, but Still comes in as a fairly small fish. So it's been dark for a good while now. So just refresh a bit, see if there's any more about. About time to get some dinner on though. Probably do a wee bit longer on that side. And we'll see how this is doing. That's not looking too bad, that. Let's get some hot chocolate on as well. I took one last thing in with me, a couple of mince pies, so we can just, about as close as I'm going to get to cooking a Christmas dinner out here. Oh, well, I think that's about as ready as I'm going to be. I'm going to less, less battered one I go. Mm, not too bad, a bit cool on top and Plenty hot below. Oh well, final fish of the night, I think. First doggy I've had up here for a while. Well, that's me in the tent now. I'm going to put the wee stove on for a bit. The tent's getting well frozen at the moment. So I'll let this run for a wee while. I'm not going to keep it on for very long tonight. Just to warm the place up. The hot chocolate's in there. Complete with a dash of whiskey, so that's me pretty much set for the night. Fishing was pretty poor actually. 
Um, just a couple of spar dogs, one of which was tiny, and a wee dogfish. Missed a couple of bites as well, but it seems to be fewer fish around than have been the last couple of times I've been up here. So, I'm going to call it a night just now, and we'll see you in the morning, I think. I think I'll just lie in my sleeping bag for a bit longer. <laughs> really seem worth it. So one of the oddities about this place is that uh, there isn't any water immediately alongside it. Uh, it's a bit unusual for the highlands, but never mind. So I'm just going to pick up some here, get a coffee on the go. So I'm just coming up to the tent just now. Uh, I think the reason for the pier is that passengers on the ferries that went up the loch used to stop off here. Well, the tent's just a, a few yards away from the, where I'm fishing, so it's quite convenient from that point of view. Maybe a little crunchy around the edges, but it's not bad at all. Nothing doing with the rods yet, so I'll reel in, rebait while I'm waiting for the bacon to cook, I think. Uh, I'll give it a wee while longer. I'm not going to waste too much time this morning. The fair hike way on the way back. So probably not worth the fuss, but one of the better ones.
Okay, so I, I said I'd just show you the rigs I use. Um, so you'll need 80 or 100 pound line. This is 80, but normally I prefer something a little heavier than that. But uh, 80 should do. Um, I'm using a grip lead here, it's a six ounce grip. Um, you need a breakaway pulley rig clip. That there. There's plenty of others in the market that will do the job just as well, I think. Um, a little 0.8mm crimp. That's just to match the 0.8mm uh, line I'm using here. Hooks are 2 -oh. Um I'm not 100% sure which make it either a 2 -oh or a 3 -oh. I think it's for Evis extra strong, but uh, I'm not completely sure. Um, just a, a ring for the the lead, um, just a, a clip. And then I'm using about 10 of these uh, beads, which I think are 8mm. Um, and you will also need a smaller one. Uh, this, I think it's a 5mm bead. And I've got another couple of 5mm beads there as well, which you'll, you'll see later on. Um, so this is a fairly straightforward rig to make, it's a pulley rig. Um, so it kind of works for me. It's designed to protect a bit from spur dog teeth. This will not guarantee you every fish. Um, but the majority of times you get away with it. Uh, your only other option really is to use wire or very thick mono. Um, and wire's really the only guarantee, I think, to stop a big spur dog biting you off. Anyway, I'll just show you how this fits together. So you're starting off with maybe about two feet of the 80 pound mono. Um, and the swivel, which I didn't show you, but which you need, is tied to the end of it. So. So, yeah, swivel at the end, add that to the list. So, just knock that on. And this is your hook length. So it's about, as I say, I usually use, use about two feet. So first thing I slip on the hook end, heading towards the swivel, is your crimp. Then your little five mil bead. And then just the remaining beads. Don't crimp anything at all at this stage, obviously. One down. So as to whether you should use luminous beads or just ordinary beads, Frankly, I don't really care. I don't uh, see much correlation between luminous beads and spur dog, but there's a lot of people believe that the luminous beads catch you more fish. And they certainly don't harm it, so I just leave them on. And then just tie the hook on after that. Again, I don't normally crimp it just now, I'll leave that to the last thing. But that's your actual hook trace done. Um, and now, a longer length of mono for your weight. I'm using two and a half, three feet here. Um, so, goes through the, goes through the pulley. And I normally put a bead on just as a little buffer. You could, again, use something slightly more sophisticated if you want. And then tie one end of the 
this line straight to your hook length. And then at the other end I put the other bead on. This is pretty much superfluous I think, but no harm in it. Tie your uh, split ring or whatever. It's just to connect to the lead, that's all. It allows you to interchange leads if you want to. And then tie the lead on, or clip the lead on rather. So what you've got is you've got the lead on about three foot of line clip your main line onto this and then you've got your uh, hook length here and the theory is fish comes along picks up the hook length can run with it for a wee bit until it hits the, the lead um, so you hook the fish and then this process reverses So that, so that the fish is along at this end, your main line's here, and essentially it's pulling your, your weight. Instead of having it dragging along the bottom, the weight is just pulled up and hopefully off the bottom a bit. Uh, as in all these things, it's absolutely no guarantees, but it seems to work okay for me. I don't, I don't lose an awful lot of gear around here. Um, and most of the issues you get are towards the side, not on the bottom itself. So the final thing you do is just push the beads up tight against the knot, um, crimp it there, and then, well what you can't do with this is obviously put a big bait on and then push it up beyond the beads. That's why you're tying it on for the most part. But I'm using reasonably small baits here, so they fit on the hook, hang down a wee bit, and you just tie them on here. And obviously you can tidy up the knots and stuff. But it gives you this little rigid bit at the bottom, which gives you some protection against the spur dog. Absolutely not guaranteed. And as I say, the, pull, the idea of the pulley rig is it just keeps your lead a little bit more clear of the bottom when you're winding in. Um, improves your chances of getting your gear back and hopefully a fish as well. So that's it. There's umpteen other ones. Um, anyway, I hope that's of some help to people. It's a bit difficult to demonstrate it all nice and neatly in the field. Um, but I say I find it a fairly reliable rig. For spur dog, to be quite honest, it doesn't matter. As long as you've got something that's reasonably robust on the hook length, then you'll pick them up. They don't differentiate. As long as you've got a fish bait, or maybe a squid bait down there, they'll, they'll pick it up and eat it quite happily. So it's not something to agonize over.